this was the question that can we ask for intercession wasila to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi and Adam alayhi salam when he asked for forgiveness to to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he took the wasila of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then only was he forgiven is so i would like to tell me which verse of the quran says that i have read the quran many times i have not found that verse at all i have not come across any hadith which says that any person any scholar sister says anything ask for proof allah says in surah baqarah chapter 2 verse 111 qul hatu bunanakum produce your proof in kuntum sadiqin but it was truthful any scholar therefore what i say that what dr zakir naik says in islam is zero no value what allah says carry weight Allah says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 90, don't have alcohol. If Dr. Zakir Naik says, don't have alcohol, no value. So therefore, what I say carries no weight. Therefore, any scholar tells you anything, you ask for proof. But some will say, you ask him proof from me. This is Shaitani Sawal. Devil's question, you're doubting me. <laughs> so any scholar says anything, you ask for proof. If the scholars clash, if they contradict, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 59 Atiullah Atiur Rasul Obey Allah and obey the messenger And those charged with authority Authority But does not end there, it continues But those with authority, if they differ, go back to Allah and his Rasul So when you find contradicting answers between two sheikhs and two scholars Ask them for proof and check up The Quran says in no less than 25 places in Surah Baqarah and Surah, <laughs> Surah Imran Several places that Wasila Shifa is haram 25 places in two places it says, to whom Allah will give permission on the day of judgment. Therefore we do dua after the adhan that make Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to intercede on our behalf on the day of judgment. In this world, you cannot ask, if you have to ask for help, ask to Allah directly, ultimate help. Allah says in Surah Fatiha chapter number 1 verse number 5, Iyakana abdu wa iyakana stain. They alone we ask, they alone we worship, they alone we ask for help. Allah says in Surah Ghafir chapter number 40 verse number 60, Allah says, you ask me and I will answer your prayer. Ask directly. Why do you require someone intermediary? Why? Why? For example, you know that suppose your mother has a heart problem. And you know that number one heart specialist is in London. And he tells that anyone can come to me, I will give you free treatment. Then will you go to second best? No. Number one is there, why go to second best? Free. So when Allah is there, he can hear a thousand people speaking at the same time, a million people. But then people give the argument, no, no, see, when you go to the court of law, you require a lawyer. So similarly, when we want to go to Allah, our lawyer is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Peer or, or whatever it is. Peer, you know, send people. So I said, fine, when we go to a court of law, the judge does not know who is the murderer, who is the robber. That's why he requires a lawyer. Do you think Allah does not know? Allah is in my game. Why does he require someone to interpret? He's the animal game. So why are you belittling Allah? Allah does not require any intermediary directly and Allah can hear all the six billion people if they speak to him Allah can hear all of them together he is not like you and me so therefore therefore you have to ask directly people give references see I know of a hadith that a sahaba told prophet to pray for him see you can ask your friend to pray for you you can ask me to pray for you I can ask you to pray for me anyone who is alive you can ask for the please mail a dua karo you can ask the person no problem but you can't ask a person who died to make dua for you. You understand? So when Prophet was alive, the Sahaba did ask the Prophet to make dua for him. But there's no hadith that after the Prophet expired, any of the Sahaba prayed to him. No. We agree that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we love him, we respect him, but we can't do shirk. Because he never told us to worship him. Now when we meet the Christians, they say we love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, therefore we worship him. I tell him, we love Jesus Christ more than the Christians. I'm more Christian than the Christians themselves, and I've given a talk on that. But just because the Christians say, we worship Jesus Christ, we, he's God, therefore we love him more. I said, you're disobeying him. Where did he say he's God? You know, there are many Hindus who hear my talk, and after they say, oh, Dr. Naik, you are Bhagawan for us. Really? After I quote the Veda, the, the Upanishad, they say, first time in my life, I'm seeing Bhagawan ka utar. Some people even touch my feet. Shirk. I tell them it is haram. I explain to them, listen brother, listen sister. Fine, you may be impressed by me, but I am a human being. It's with Allah's help. Otherwise, without that, I can't do anything. And I explain. And I tell not only it is wrong according to the Quran, it is wrong according to Veda also. To believe I am Avatar of Bhagavan. So just because they say, that does not mean I become. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. 
So similarly, some Muslims say that just because you don't want to pray through Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you are you are disrespectful to him. It's totally wrong. I love my prophet. I love him, mashallah, a lot more than many of the people. But because I love him, I want to obey him. Said that you have to go to God through him. There's not a single hadith. So therefore, you realize, sister, that if you have to ask Allah directly. We have to obey Allah and obey the Messenger also. We have to love Him, we have to respect Him, but we can't worship Him. Hope that answers the question.